Hello and welcome to the PPD YouTube channel, folks. Clyde Lindsay here from Pixel Pro Displays. Hey, it's good to see you again on a Twinkle Tip Friday. And there's a lot going on here in PPD land, so stay tuned. Let's get started. I want to get right to everything. Well, welcome back, folks. Um, I, we have a huge sale going on right now, and we only do this one or two times a year. And at this point in the year, it's a great sale. So if you head over to pixelprodisplays.com, we're doing, for the first time ever, we're giving away free pixels. That's right, we're giving away free pixels. And we're doing that in combination with our uh, affiliate vendor, Easy RGB who is giving a thousand pixels away for every new club member or non-club member. This is for people who are not in the club, people who are looking to join the club, people who have never been in the club before. So we're giving away a thousand pixels when you join the annual, the one year for $359 annual club membership. Without any further ado, head over to the website, go check it out. Before we before we roll into uh, what I want to cover today, which is on a little bit, it's it's mixing a little bit of last week uh, because last week's video was important for me to sit down and explain, and I'm going to explain it hopefully a little bit better quickly before we begin. But uh, I want everybody to know that the, the the term priority has never been an X lights term uh, priority, and if you watched last week's video. Um, the, the term priority is a, a term that I started calling it because it, it's it, whenever you blend layers, whenever you are looking at the hierarchy of X lights and how all of your models are listed, how all your groups are listed, um, when you look at all of those things stacked together, whatever's usually on the bottom is going to show up, and that's what I meant by priority. It's more of a priority for X lights to show what's on the bottom than it is on what's on the top because of layer blending. But that doesn't mean that you can't blend layers between that. Here is a, a brand new sequence. We just opened it up, and X lights has what's called a master view. Now, if you sequence frequently and you open up your sequence you'll notice that every time you open up your sequence you have to take the time to put all of your props in a specific order so you can find it or maybe you don't and if you don't know this then i'm gonna i'm gonna kind of start breaking some things down uh, a few videos ago i'll see if i can link the video somewhere um, there is a, a video that i talk about these little boxes that are over here on the left hand side of x lights uh sequencing screen on your on your model grid here and to me, these are, well, I, I don't know why they were put in X lights, but uh, it became very clear that I could use these to sort my layout in a specific order and keep things kind of organized. And I don't want to go through all of that video as well, because we'd be here for uh, forever. On all your groups, you have this thing called a tag color. And looking at this tag color, this gives you the ability or the opportunity to give different colors to different groups. Now, whenever you come over here, you can physically say, hey, if I gave everything, every group that's on the house a color of blue, and if I gave everything on the yard the color of red, it would kind of help you visually see. Instead of having to read, you could visually see really quick, hey, there's a red, there's a blue, there's a red, there's a blue. What does that mean? That means it's a house or a yard item. Uh, and then I threw in green here. It's all stars, because the house and the star, uh, the house and the yard have stars in it, and it's kind of a submodel group, so I put that in there as well. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because what you want to do is you want to set up a master view in your display elements so that every time you go in and sequence that you have a basic structural order. And that's what we're in here is we're in display elements. I took the time to create some different views. Now there's this one here. I use it constantly. It's called the new master. Now, the new master is what I sequence in in every sequence. If I go ahead and close the uh, display element screen, what you'll see now is a different order for absolutely everything compared to what the other master, what the master, the x -Lite's default master view, is set up. Now, I want to say that if you look here, you'll see that I put all my red stuff at the top. And there's a couple blue ones, but the blue ones are relative to the blue ones down below that. Now this goes back to the video from last week where I talk about 
how things are structured in XLite. So what I want to show you is if you look here, you notice that I have the columns here, the house matrix, the roof. The roof has a lot of main groups. Whenever I go back here and I look on the house and I click on the roof lower and the roof upper group, those are dark blue groups, but they're only the roof groups that are on the lower side of the roof or the upper side of the roof. But they're main groups. They're a main, main group. What I actually could do though is I could change one of my group colors, and I'll do it, uh, is the icicles. The icicles could actually be a lighter blue because I put the icicles down below those other groups in my, in my new master list, which becomes eventually my master view. So maybe, maybe I should uh, maybe give this a lighter blue color, and I could do the same thing for uh, the gutters because the gutters are, are there too. Those are subgroups of all of the roof items. So if I go in here and I, I give it a little bit lighter of a color, click OK there, I can save it. And you can see here that here's my upper roof and my lower roof and my all roof group, right? You can see that. But now you can see like these are kind of the subgroups of all of these being comprised together. Why is this important? Well, because if I change this to the master view, they're all kind of out of whack. They're not in the same order that you saw earlier. So this is why we go. I go into Display Elements and I go to New Master and I click. I click on it and click on it and I go to Make Master. And now the Master View has been updated to what the new Master was. So the old Master View is now gone. That was the default. It, you get the default if you want to by going back and opening up a new sequence, a blank sequence, and there's your master view, your default master view that XLights likes to set up. And it sets it up pretty much the same way every time. So um, now we're in. We've, we've made our uh, new master into our master view. And now you can see we have the roofs. And, and here's why this is important. I'm going to put a timing mark here. And I'm going to reveal some of the little secrets that I, I, I use to sequence with because, because it's the best way to exemplify this layer blending that goes on inside X-Lights and why I call it priority. If I put something on the bottom and it's in the master view, it, I give it the priority to be on the top or most viewed. Okay? Again, it's my term. It's not an X-Lights term. So if I look at... Uh, putting something on the all roof. Let's let's say let's say I go to the all roof up here. I, I, I select red. Let me deselect these, and I put a color wash on here. And let's let's do a horizontal fade, a little fadey, and I'll add some sparkle to it because I like to do that. And and so now I have these effects on the all roof. But another thing that I can do is I can go down a layer to so this is a darker blue. This is a little bit brighter blue. That's the all roof is the really dark one. Uh, well, well, that lighter color is my lower roof and my upper roof. Well, what if I want to put a single strand effect on there? Let's change it to green. And we'll do from middle, and we'll add two chases, and we'll make it chase twice. So there's two chases. Maybe we make it three. There we go. And uh, oh, let's get rid of the red. And let's fade it. So there we go. That's on the lower roof. Now, what if I copy this and I paste this, and instead of from the middle, oh, look, I can go to the middle. So this is one of the reasons why we spend a lot of time building our groups a certain way so that whenever you program and you sequence and you map, that you can take advantage of some of the extra pieces whenever I get to sequence, how they're portrayed on your layout. The next thing, this is really going to blow your mind. What if I didn't want anything to be on the icicles at all, period? Well, you know what I can do? I can come up here to the off effect, and I can grab the off effect and put it right on the icicles. And look what happened. Nothing, not one thing on those icicles. Nothing at all. Because I put an off effect on it. Now, if I delete the off effect, and let's say I put, um, let's say I put uh, a pinwheel effect. And I'm gonna I'm gonna be very specific. I'm gonna do one pinwheel, and I'm going to use white. And hopefully you can see it blend. And we're gonna change this to per model default. And I'm gonna make this really thick. And uh, I'm gonna twist it. So there's there's a really thick, 
And now I'm going to add 3D to this. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move it to one side. Boom. So I just put four different effects on four different groups. And thanks to the ability to layer, thanks to the ability to group, and knowing that if something is on the bottom of my master view, it's going to take precedence over top of everything else. It's going to give it the primary spot. It's going to make it stand out further because whenever you're looking, even though you see it on the top, it's actually way down on the list, and that's okay. What if you wanted to go even further? So here you can see, uh, let, me, let, me, uh, let me thicken this up even more. So, so you have a nice big thick single arm of pinwheel going right across there, right? You can see that going, but it's over top of the green. It's covering the green. Um, you could do other things too. I think you'd do black. Let's try black. Yeah, see, see how it's creating a black, a negative space between that. Now, what if we try this on something different? Notice the color structure. I used a darker blue, then a lighter blue, then an even lighter blue. Well, what about these snowflakes here? Well. If I, if I introduce you to the snowflake group, here is the snowflake, the, uh, we'll, we'll call this the on effect for turquoise. And now we have another group that's called snowflakes large. Well, if we double click on this group, this happens to be the two high density snowflakes. They could be your high density snowflakes in your show. Uh, but if you wanted to, if you have really big props, we could sequence those differently because we can put them in a separate group and only sequence on those. And well, if I come over here and I put the on effect onto those and I change it to red, again, the master view here is saying, oh, here, here's, a, here's, a, here, here's the effect is up here, but it's blending with this effect down here. Now, of course, if I change this to bars and I put it in 3D, look how it's blending the layer because it has one bar. Now, I could, add, I could add a turquoise to it and you could see the turquoise blend real solid but then with the red you would see it blend through to the turquoise um, just it's it's a different way to think about sequencing now here's another thing that we can do we can come down here and we can go and put a uh, green effect onto our snowflake arms which has a brighter blue color and it's below all of those groups that means it's a submodel color so what if we change this to say per model per preview and we make that nice and big, you'll see that the green is overtaking the red on those submodels. And that's because it's on the layer below, thanks to the master view. And it therefore gets the priority. It gets to stay on the top view. So you see it more accurately, even though, as Xlight says, it renders from the top line down to the bottom. It mechanically does that. So. The, 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 the idea that I'm showing you today, guys, is basically has to do with using these little tag colors, putting your models in order, keeping your submodels into a, let's say, a uh, brighter color group, put those on the lower on the end of your list, and anything you put on those, um, let's say the off effect. I just turned off the snowflakes on the rings using the off effect. I can turn off the tips here, too. So there, I just turned off the little tips around the edge. So if you take the time to build your groups in a master view or create a view and put them in order and keep your larger groups, this is what we mean by keep your larger groups to the top or your main groups. It's, it's logical to put the snowflakes in a group, Well, but it's also logical to put your high density snowflakes into a group, but it's also uh, logical to put your high density snowflake uh, submodels into a group below your uh, large high density group, which is below your snowflake group, which they're already in anyway. I hope this video has found uh, has been a, a little bit more helpful, a little informative, and maybe if you're sequencing and you're looking to kind of break things up and learn a new tactic, a new uh, trick, this is something you can throw into your arrow quiver. But it's important that you understand that that master view really means something. And it's important that whoever sequences, if you're mapping sequences or you're sequencing on your own, especially if you're mapping, that you really need to know 
know what's in the downloaded sequence. What is the, what, how did that, that person set up their master view? Because if they use some of these tips and you didn't follow and, and follow up and, and check on those things whenever before you did your mapping, then your mapping isn't going to come across the way that they possibly had intended it to be. And you might be seeing some strange things. So that is everything we have for you today, guys. Thank you for joining us. This is Clyde here. Just remember that every week we do a new Twinkle Tip Friday video. You're welcome to put your request down in the comments for anything you'd like to learn. That's actually helpful because there's a lot of things that people would like to learn but have no idea uh, how to do something. Just ask and either we have the video already or we can make one for you. If you like the video, please give us a huge thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you appreciate the things that we do here at Pixel Pro Displays, consider joining the PVD Sequence Club right now. From now until the 31st of July, 2024. PPD, if you join the PVD Sequence Club, you get 1,000 free pixels from our affiliate vendor. That is Easy RGB. And between the two of us, we're making this one hell of a deal for anybody to sign up and join the PPD Sequence Club. Each month you get one new to the store sequence and it's in our triple play sequence section. So each month the triple play section changes. So you'll get two or three, well you'll definitely get three different songs each every month, but we put one or two new ones up every month. So there you have it guys. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for joining me and we'll see you in the next video. Take care and goodbye for now.